solving our truss is using the method of joints, which amounts to isolating just one joint and looking at the various members that actually interact with that particular joint. But the principle of these trusses by the method of sections is exactly the same as that, albeit with a different application. If an object is in equilibrium, then any part of that object is in equilibrium. Now before we looked at an individual truss joint and said that joint must be in equilibrium. But we don't need to be limited to that. What I want to do right now is say anything that's on this chunk must be in equilibrium. After all, if only half of it was in equilibrium and the other half wasn't, then this half would be accelerating away from that half and we call that a broken bridge. So if we're looking at this truss and I want to look at just a chunk of the truss, I'm going to isolate half of it, which means I've cut through three of these. And when I cut through a two-force member, or when I consider what's happening inside a two-force member, I just get these three forces that act along the member itself. So if this is a four and a six, then this is a two and a three. Once I have this, I can consider, just like I consider the equations of equilibrium for the entire truss, I can now consider the equations of equilibrium for any part of the truss. If you're looking at this particular one, I can use the sum of the forces in X, the sum of the moments at F, and the sum of the moments at C, and each of those is one equation and one unknown to give me CX, CY, and FY. That's the external equations of equilibrium. Once I have those, I can isolate just the left half of the truss, and I can write the same sort of rigid body equations of equilibrium as before. So I can use the sum of the moments at D, and I get one equation in AB. The sum of the forces in Y, I get one equation in BD, and that one which I already solved for. And the sum of the forces in X. And again, all of these fall out to be one equation in one unknown, and I can solve for these three internal loads. These are the same as that you would get if you looked at the truss joint at C, and then the truss joint at A, and then the truss joint at D. Each of the joints gives you two equations of equilibrium. Each of the truss sections gives you three, because the truss section is a rigid body. Please be careful not to just cut right here. If you cut right here, in fact, all you have is C, and then you wind up with a particle equilibrium again. So it's not always the case that you will have three. That would be just a joint. Couple hints. Pick sections that only have three unknowns, because then you can solve for everything and that has happens in them. You can combine, just like we just did, external equations of equilibrium with equations of equilibrium that come from your truss sections, or with equations of equilibrium that come from your joints. It doesn't really matter how you get your equations, any of them are valid and they can, can be combined as you wish. You do need to completely separate one half of the truss from the other half of the truss. And it doesn't matter which half you, you take, because when you take them apart, you've got equal and opposite forces on each side. So you can solve the, the left-hand side or the right-hand side, you'll get the same thing. But what you can't do is cut sort of part the way through a truss and say, I'm just going to consider what this one would be. Equations of equilibrium only matter, only apply if you have a free object, a free body diagram. And these things don't have to be straight. You can draw all manner of wavy lines if you want to, to separate one bit of tr truss from another bit of truss, as long as you completely sever the truss one, from one side from the other.